How are you feeling about becoming a new parent? Me, as soon as she does, I'm off. <laughs> I'm walking down the road without her. Do you know that is the single most annoying question that I have been asked? I wouldn't want you to like stop them doing something which I, in my mind, would see as fun, yeah. adrenaline. And she just dived straight in with the most horrific horror stories yeah. about labour and birth. And basically saying, if you do this, you'll die. You are my absolute best friend, and I know. Oh. And it's cute. I'm getting really soppy now. Can you sense I'm building up to a big butt? Yeah, I feel like <laughs> Do I actually want you down the business end? <laughs> Apart from the bins, which is definitely a blue job. There aren't Sorry, I said blue, blue job. job. Blue job. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. This is civilized. Oh, that awful sl slurp. slurp sound to start the video podcast. Are we calling it a video podcast? Let's call it a video podcast, yeah. Oh, I'm going to go there. Um, no, basically, we decided to just sit down this week because, um, yeah, the previous few vlogs have been us sort of running around like headless chickens. Yeah. And it's been quite a while since we've actually sat down and just had a normal, uninterrupted chat so we're actually using this week this week's YouTube video as couples therapy. Ther therapy session. Right? Your yeah. favourite thing to do. Love talking. Let's get on topic and explain what this video podcast is going to be all about. So, James has got no idea what's no. coming up. <laughs> Literally doesn't have a clue. But it's a nice early morning. We've got half an hour. <laughs> Before you need to start work. Okay, let's do this. Jingle. Do, 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 do. The Colvin. <laughs> so basically, this um, this video is a bit of a, a third trimester recap, pregnancy recap, relationship recap, mm -hmm. how it's all going. Um, but at the time of recording this, we are 31 weeks pregnant. We are, yeah. Not long to go now. We've officially started the 10-week countdown. It is getting very real. It's petrifying. In I fact, am petrified now. Last night we were working on the nursery and it was the first time I thought, wow, there's going to be a human it's, in there. It's where we put the mattress inside the yeah. cot and it was like, somebody's going to be lying in there. Yeah. Our lives Is are it about a boy? to change. Is it a girl? All we know, it's Colin. <laughs> Still called Colin. I'm, I'm, I'm so stuck on Colin now. I'm uh, quite scared. If it's a boy... I think, yeah, if it's a boy, Colin is more likely to stick. Whereas if it's a girl, a bit like Evelyn, Evelyn was known as Neil. <laughs> Our and, niece, Evelyn, was known yeah. as Neil for nine months. Um, so as soon as she was obviously a girl, I mean, she was always a girl, but as soon as we found out, at least Neil was dropped. Yeah. Whereas, and actually on that, so there's a few people who I think still in the comments think it's a boy and think it's called Colin. Yeah, just to be so. clear, we're not using Colin. Not that there's anything wrong with that name. It just, it's so similar to Colvin. Yeah, Colin Colvin. We thought really. we were hilarious <laughs> by nicknaming it Colin. It's not actually that funny. No. Anyway, so we are 31 weeks. And the baby, according to my app this morning, is the size of a small puppy going into a lion cub. Oh, into a Simba. Yeah, yeah. I think I also looked at the fruit as well. What fruit is it? A winter squash. We're coming to the end of a winter squash going into a honeydew melon. Oh. Yeah. But as they will be able to see from the thumbnail, this baby's getting pretty big now. So that's where we're at. 31 weeks. Yeah. It's been... Um, it's been an enjoyable journey so far for me. Well, why don't you tell me about it? <laughs> Third trimester is by far the hardest. Yeah. So far. Um, I was really lucky with first and second in terms of symptoms they weren't that bad I had energy I could move around I could do stuff mm. wasn't that tired third trimester hits and do you know it's only the backache and the heartburn if I didn't have those two things again it would be fine I was gonna say I don't think the third trimester in the grand scheme of what I've heard from other people it's not been terrible but it's definitely been your worst trimester so far yeah 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 We've been trips to the chiropractor, which you were telling me that they have some really cool pillows. Oh my God. So I walked into the chiropractor office and it's the first time that I've seen like a, a medical pregnancy pillow. Mm. And it's like this human body, 
this massive blue human body, like upper body, with just a giant hole in it. Cut out holes. Like a foam. You know when you go to like um, a playhouse or something, you jump on all the foam. It's that material. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, and you basically... Cut out for your bump. Cut out for your bump and your boobs. Oh. Because there's lots of lady lumps going on around here. It's not just, it's not just the bump. And one for your face? Uh, and, then, and then your face is like normal like on the... See, I had to say, I actually hate the face things in a massage. Do you? Yeah, I don't know why. It just, my face doesn't fit in properly. Because you've got such a big head. It just really hurts. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> it's not about me. <laughs> it's not about you. Uh, so third trimester has been third considerably trimester worse yeah. than one and two. Yeah, just like the back is really bad. Mm really bad um i've had to resort to like we've just said acupuncture chiropractor because outside help has is been needed things. yeah you do have good good massage thumbs yeah they're gonna be handy for perennial massage <laughs> oh goodness. this is probably the topic we'll talk about i didn't even know what this was <laughs> and it is you're excited for it though right it's different <laughs> I think I showed you like a video or a diagram and you were like, what on earth is this? I feel as though we do need to try and keep everything. I know it's anatomy and all that sort of stuff. We'll just keep it PG. We have young people watching us. We had a comment from a lovely, so lovely sweet. lady on Instagram this week that basically said, um, uh, I watch all of your vlogs every Sunday with my 13-year-old granddaughter. They have date night. Yeah. yeah well on a sun yeah on a sunday yeah. i think they're in canada aren't they and it made me so happy to think that we have like an older generation of like grandmas and like their grandchildren who watch together watch together yeah. it's so sweet but also makes me or well, reminds me that i feel like i've got a responsibility to be pc on, on absolutely here. yeah and we're not exactly um that crazy we're not controversial or we try not to be and I do think when you see a lot of YouTubers, they do some pretty controversial stuff and it helps them. They grow so many subscribers. Yeah, but we're not. they're shocking. We're not here for that. I wouldn't say we were that shocking. No, I mean, we could be. There might be some interesting revelations about you in this podcast. I don't know the questions yet. Mm-hmm. Speaking of which, should we just dive right in with a bit of Let's a combo? Just do it. It's going to be quite casual. Not to, um, it's early morning. I'm still waking up. Just fire away and I'll fire some questions at you. And I do apologise because I, I have terrible heartburn. It's like every 10 minutes I feel like I'm burping and it's not me being rude, I swear. I just, I can't help it. <laughs> there might be some funny noises. And also just to... Um, Probably going from both sides of the sofa. <laughs> just to explain, we've never done this before. Well, you've obviously recorded music and used these microphones, but it was very much a, um, this is a test. So hopefully you can hear us properly. And Let us know if you like it as well. Yeah, please do. So you briefly mentioned, obviously, working on the nursery this week and feeling quite, well, scared. What's the word to use? Anxious, Anxious. nervous. How are you feeling about becoming a new parent? I've, I, feel, I feel really good. It was only last night when I was like, wow, there's it like almost hitting home. And also we sent out our invites to our friends and sending this is for the baby show we're just shower, having a small yeah. thing in the park um and it was the first time i kind of thought wow this is this is really happening i'm used to having you know evelyn we've got jackson my our nephew which we're great with but it's kind of like wow we've actually got to look after a human yeah um and i do find myself some days getting to the end of the day and i've just been completely rushed off my feet doing stuff but at the end of the day i'm like what have i actually done yeah how am I going to fit in time to look after a human and keep a human alive? Um, so I do, I, every now and again it hits me, but I'm quite good at putting things off. <laughs> <laughs> like almost just forget about that until I have to deal with it. So I think I probably in September, fingers crossed it's September, it doesn't come early. Um, I feel as though then it's really going to hit me and I'm, it's going to be a wake up call. Do you think, yeah. I think it's going to be a big, big wake-up call. A wake-up call every 45 minutes. <laughs> you and I are 
fiercely independent. Um, we love doing like things together and our own things. We literally say yes and go out whenever we want to do stuff. And I think that is my biggest fear now is that we have nine weeks to go and I'm feeling as though I'm going to lose my independence and who I am a little bit. Like I'm quite, I'm quite nervous to just start something that is completely unknown. And yeah, exactly. And we, we, we have no idea what it's going to be like. Yeah. Well, we have some idea, but not what's been good about looking after babies in the past is at the end of the day, obviously you give them back, you give them back and you have to deal with the sleepless nights or you just do a couple. Uh, whereas this is forever. You, th- th- there's nothing else you can do. Um, I'm yeah I would completely agree with all of that Um, I'm also quite nervous about the physical changes that my body's going to go through I'm not nervous about mm labour because I can't control it like the doctors know what they're doing I'm going to be in a a safe place where you know if anything happens even if it's a little bit scary or whatever it is I'm in the right place to be well looked after and no matter what the baby's got to come out some way shape or form you can prepare to a certain amount you know you can have your plan but really what's going to happen is going to happen do you know that is the single most annoying question that i have been asked over the past seven and a half months is what is your birth plan Uh, i've seen this i'm sure or or what kind of birth would you like because of what i think you watch on youtube shows up when i watch youtube as well and yeah. there are a lot of things about the because i've clicked a few the whole birth plan thing and there was a guy who was mentioning some of the best things you can do as a guy is talk about the birth plan and talk about that and i feel as though the birth plan is it's not a it's not a waste of time obviously mm. because you want it to go a certain way but it's something's just it's going to happen how it happens right I think in in every woman's mind they have an idea of the birth that they would like to have and Hitting wouldn't ev- yeah wouldn't everybody like a lovely All calm time. relaxing birth arrive at the hospital just drops out exactly that is the dream right uh maybe a water birth for some mm-hmm. just something really really relaxed uh but in reality I'm feeling very aware that you know it's my first and mm-hmm. the chances are it's probably not going to go perfectly to plan and so when people ask me that question i never really know how to answer no. it because you can like, just well, say, i'd like this but <laughs> something else is probably going to happen realistically it's not going to happen yeah yeah or it might not i think the biggest thing for me is is motivation like i'm a bit of a sometimes i need tough love and sometimes i need gentle encouragement mm. and it's 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 finding out or it's figuring out when i need well it's finding which. the balance between those two and yeah. which one which one at that time do you need yeah because if someone tells me well you can't do it can you i'm like that's like a red rag to yeah. a bull <laughs> i'm like well i am gonna go and do it then. <laughs> that really annoys me so but it gives me that like motivation exactly to do yeah it. for but, other people that might not work exactly they might need a bit of you're doing a great job. But then I have had almost 10 years with you, so I should... <laughs> a lot of pressure there. I should know how to, if in doubt, put a bit of Ludovici iron out, Dion. Just to chill you out. <sighs> Calming piano music. But obviously, you don't want that when it's happening. Do you want a bit more of a... Well, the thing is, that it. gets my adrenaline going. And the thing that you don't need in childbirth is adrenaline. You want the opposite. You want oxytocin. You want to calm, relax. You want every everything... See... <laughs> so sorry you want everything to just be really relaxed yeah. so maybe we need to tone down the heavy metal <laughs> maybe we could have a we should chat with um we have a friend's mum who's a doula yeah and she was great in the past oh she's basically amazing. saying don't let the doctor tell you what to do <laughs> you tell them what position you feel comfortable in everything is down to the the mother she should decide things not the doctor's you know the positions at least speaking of advice there is so much advice out there it's completely overwhelming um i have put blinkers on and i'm only reading stuff that is positive not because it's hard, though. oh it is hard there's just so much negative stuff out there yeah it feels just from an outsider that 
almost no no one wants to hear about a nice birth story. Like, yeah. It's just everyone everyone we met, we've had a few people who picked some stuff up from the house. They love telling bad stories. I was just going to bring this this story I mean, up, actually. Yeah. Um, I remember because it kind of, not traumatised you, but afterwards you were like... Oh, it did. Why? Why would you say that? I was actually angry. Yeah. I was angry that this woman who I didn't know, never met her before, she just came to the house to pick up a unit that we were selling from Facebook Marketplace. She took one look at me and asked me, you know, how far along are you and things like that. And she just dived straight in with the most horrific horror stories yeah. about labor and birth it's basically saying if you do this you'll die and i was like I- i'm sorry mm. who-, who are you mm. I- i'm literally a brand new mother this is so unhelpful yeah. and um i just don't understand why women and men and you know people in general just find the need to be like oh i have the most horrendous story mm. i'm like i don't want to listen i don't want to know or you could just be like tell me after yeah yeah just tell me after because some stories are quite interesting to i think medically quite interesting to find out about what happened but you don't want to be telling people the bad stories and i just feel as though a mother possibly who has gone through a really nice um labor in fact when i went to margate recently with some friends the um, my friend from school she had a really good pregnancy and labor and i just feel as though you don't hear those stories i don't know if Mm. mothers feel almost Almost bad to say oh it was so easy for us yeah and i think possibly we felt that a little bit in the first two trimesters because you were very lucky and it all went you know all went well yeah obviously now slightly changed it's not terrible but no i mean i can't complain about a few niggles and aches and pains it's it's inevitable and it's going to happen but maybe people just feel as though others don't want to hear you saying oh it's been so easy mm. not that it's been easy but as yeah, in like you it's feel been like more easy than a lot of stories out there you feel like you're gloating but actually i think if we shared more of the positive stories about pregnancy and childbirth mm. it will be less daunting yeah i mean i th- i think the um i follow a really good account on instagram called motherly and it's a lot of it is about the postpartum journey so the fourth trimester oh, okay and I do really like that because it is quite honest and raw. Mm. Um, and I think once the baby's out, it's like, okay, well done. See you later. Off you go. Go and figure it out. And actually, there's this incredibly vulnerable set of new parents who are probably going through so much. Their body is completely different mm. to to what they've known. And it is quite an honest account of, of everything. And I do quite like that. Well, it's a big change to become pregnant and your body go through that and then almost instantly overnight you've gone from having a baby inside you to then obviously looking after it but there's a big change there I think probably what mentally as well oh massively I'm I'm not concerned about the saggy skin or the bump or the belly that I'm gonna have for weeks afterwards I'm I'm really not Mm. fussed I'm more nervous about any long-lasting physical changes that may or may not happen as a result of going through childbirth. Mm. Um, You know, I'm someone who's used to being so fit and active and going out and doing stuff. And I just don't want, yeah, my body to suffer any like long-lasting physical things that I have to sort of work with and overcome. I think that's a little bit of a, a worry in my mind, in the back of my mind. Fingers crossed. It'll all be okay. Fingers crossed. Right. Let's move on from that. Though, actually, just to touch on it, because it was before, like, how how are we feeling about it? Um, we, would, we were kind of... It feels weird that it's... We're almost in mourning of just us two. Like, we've oh, got the yeah. last few weeks of just us, and then we've got to, you know, look after a human being. Yeah. And that's going to be 24-7. Um, there's part of me who, you know, I'd love to now, especially coming out of lockdown, a lot of friends are having a lot more things going on Mm. and I would love to be going to all these things you know they're friends that I've had for years but equally like I also just want the weekends for us because and I think that might be hard to sort of understand and you don't want to try and explain that equally after the baby's born I feel as though you know you want to carry on going to go and see them go and play golf do all those things but also I've been told especially by brother-in-law that 
you don't really want to do anything else. That human's there, and you just want to spend all your time with the human. Oh, that's cute. So I think it, I think for me, it's going to be hard because I love going out and doing extra things. And again, it's yeah. kind of weighing up at the moment because you also, being pregnant, just want to relax, do nothing, get the mm. house ready, mm. which I do as well. Equally, I also want to go and see others. It's 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 quite a hard sort of balance to get that right. And I think there's a little bit of not anxiety a little bit of a worry of how to balance your friendship life yeah as well as being a new parent yeah i would as completely well as agree business the only thing i would add to that is that we are so fortunate that we are surrounded by the most incredibly supportive oh, friends yeah. um like they are amazing like every single one of them and they know where we live so you, <laughs> you can come here <laughs> You can come around for a cup of tea. So I have to um, listen to a screaming baby. <laughs> I do think they'll be great. Yeah. They're very understanding. Uh, but it's true. We potentially have, what, nine weekends left mm. with it just being us two. And I have found myself getting really emotional about, like you just said, the morning, like morning us two and the relationship and it just being us two. Because mm. oh, we do It's been us two for almost together. 10 years. Yeah. It's all we've known. Yeah. It's all we've known, really. Like, pre... Well, I met you when I was 20. So before then, you're a kid, you're a teenager. You don't really think about mm. things in life. Like, we have grown up together. We've gone into adulthood. You know, we've been through so much. And it has just always been us two. Mm. Like, you are my absolute best friend. And I Aww. know... I know, it's getting cute. I'm getting really soppy now. But I know that I can rely on you for literally anything. Mm. Um but now somebody else has to rely on me. And that petrifies me because I think I rely on you quite a lot for stuff. Well, I think we rely on each other for, I think we've become a little bit too uh, much like, oh, that Jamie will sort that. And oh, Megan, Megan was, will yeah. sort that. Like that's Megan's strength, that's, Jamie, yeah. that's Jamie's strength. And now it's like, well, a big part of the baby to begin with, you're going to be taken up with that. Yeah. Obviously I am as well, but I feel as though to begin with the mother probably, I mean, if you're breastfeeding, it's going to be probably more you. So I feel as though I'm going to have to kind of pick up. On Wait, the I'm slot. sorry. Probably more me. Okay. <laughs> have you got something uh, in the, those bad boys that either. you haven't told me about? <laughs> but I'm going to have to learn to take on more. And I've had like 10 years of not really doing that. Yeah. Though I cooked dinner last night. Yeah, <laughs> you did. So if we talk about just the last night. I've done a hundred percent of the cooking this week. This week, yeah. <laughs> Gosh, mm. that's a, that's good. I mean, it's not going to last, though, is it? No. Actually, that starting that conversation, I jotted down a little question that I really wanted to ask you, um, and it was: I wanted to ask if there, if you had any concerns about like me being a mum. Ooh. Um... And like vice versa. What is in your concerns about me being a dad? Yeah. I think you're going to be an amazing mum. You, I mean, you're amazing with all kids. Um, the only thing is worrying about them hurting themselves. So yeah. <laughs> I, growing up, I was quite an, kind of, I loved extreme sports. Yeah. Being quite boisterous, um, messing about, hurting themselves, riding motorbikes, um, BMX, just making random jumps and like, hurting myself <laughs> luckily i haven't actually broken too many bones i messed up my knee really badly and broke my hand but apart from that i was probably quite lucky i feel as though that is all part of growing up <laughs> yeah um i think kids i mean it's horrible to think but kids are probably going to break something at some point i know and it petrifies me we're going to end up going to a &E. in fact that kind of there's a house just down the road they've got three boys <laughs> And the mum, honestly, in the on the street WhatsApp she's group. She's Superman, by the way. She is incredible, but she's constantly taking pictures outside A and E. <laughs> like every week, one of the kids has broken something. Yeah. Um, and I feel as though that's the only thing I wouldn't want you to like stop them doing something, which I, in my mind, would see as fun, yeah. adrenaline, but you might see as dangerous. I feel as yeah. though you're a little bit more cautious oh, I'm with def yeah, definitely that sort more of cautious. stuff. Which is which is understandable, but I feel as though once it's happened once, I think after that it's kind of like, oh well they'll break something else. Yeah. They're gonna 
hurt themselves somehow i think bones you can sort of get over a bit it's it's like head injuries and things Mm. like that that just fill me with so much dread and i think it's a really fair point that you make and um funnily enough i'm someone who's quite keen to do those activities myself like Mm. i've done a bungee jump and i would quite happily do some like bonkers things but i'm not bothered because it's me it's about it's it's myself it's when i watch you do something or someone that i really really love or a kid and I just can't watch. I can't watch. I get so petrified that they're going to hurt themselves. But, but the feeling that you get from doing those things, which is amazing, and getting that rush, I, I feel as though they need to experience that yeah. as much as they can. Yeah. Um, just but yeah, just don't tell me that. about things. Okay. <laughs> we'll have like... Extreme daddy Sundays. Daddy, daughter, daddy, <laughs> son time. Where we can... Just go, go behind my back things. and go like mountain biking. and Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll be going skiing and all that sort of stuff. So, like... I mean, I break you... my arm skiing. It happens. So. So. I will ask you the same question. What worries do you have about me being a dad? Um, Not many. Oh. I, well, first of all, you are going to be the best dad. Um, You have all of the traits, both, like, emotionally and practically, to be the best best dad you're super calm i i don't know anyone as patient as you are um and you're very obviously warm and loving and i know you're just going to care for it so much i think that's like the emotional side and you're fun you want to play with them all the time you've got loads of energy um practically you can build anything you can fix a pram you can fix a car seat (laughs) i just jamie how do i do this and i can guarantee you'll know how to do it and i think all of those qualities are just going to be so helpful and amazing Mm. Can you sense I'm building up to a big butt? Yeah, I feel as if there's um, <laughs> something coming. But I think my concerns are kind of, we touched on it before a little bit about the different roles that we've sort of slipped into as like a couple to make our lives easier. And for you, I know that your strong point isn't multitasking or being particularly organized. And I think when you've got another human in the world you have to almost look at the day like in the week and think okay well what do i need by lunchtime today what do i already need by the evening let's get it done now that you're very much like oh okay the problem's arisen i'll fix it now whereas it's like i'm forward i'm already imagining that this could happen throughout the day so i'm going to plan for it now and everything's going to run smoothly and i am obviously going to be taken away more fingers crossed breastfeeding if i can Mm -hmm. um and having that time away from doing the food shopping or planning dinners or food or whatever it is and you work so incredibly hard full time and you find time to do youtube with me weekly vlogs and doing all of that throw a human into the mix Mm. and a wife that's recovering from childbirth i think there's i'm worried about the amount of pressure that might be on you and how you're going to manage that time effectively i mean it's a good one because i do i that is a worry yeah of at the moment it's hard to fit so many things into the day i think you've been used to now only having to look after yourself your whole life yeah and, uh, and i think that's fair you. to say <laughs> I tell you, yeah well yeah if i've ever maybe drunk a bit too much at university <laughs> you have to hold my hair back <laughs> i think yeah what would be good is if we don't just slip into okay you do that and you do that because in my mind yeah. then it's just for me it's like well that's megan sorting that and I'm sorting that. Mm. And I think it's very much going to be a constant like, oh, I, I'll prep lunch today because of whatever. Yeah. You might do it a different day. And like, yeah. otherwise, I'm, I'm very good at like, that's a blue job. And that's a pink job. Oh, we can't. I mean, we can't admit that. I mean, it's all equal, right? We firmly believe in equality. I do the bins. <laughs> Apart from the bins, which is definitely a blue job. There aren't Sorry, I said jobs. blue job. <laughs> a blue job. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, do you think you'll be an embarrassing parent? Oh, yes. 100%. Well, I think I am, but I actually feel quite... Uh, I get quite self-conscious in public. Mm. Um, so this whole YouTube thing, Megan's so good at just whipping the camera and talking to it. Me, as soon as she does... I'm off. I'm walking down the road without her. I I struggle to get it. I struggle to get the camera out in public. Yeah. Because of what people might think. So, 
a fun dad at home absolutely yeah I, th- I feel as though I need to get over being out in public and being fun yeah and even with like when we have Evelyn on our own or if we're looking after Jackson I'm really fun with them but yeah. when the parents are around I feel as though I'm a little bit more like reserved yeah and yeah. I just need to get over that because yeah the kid needs to just laugh yeah and have fun and I think I, I struggle a little bit when other people are around when we're in the house on our own and again probably on camera but at home I feel as though I'll be I'll be good it's more of a safe space for you exactly mm-hmm. it's just us three and a few people watching online <laughs> um but out in public I think I w- I hope I won't be um and I put like the kid first and I can yeah. just have fun but I, I do think that might be might yeah be a bit of a struggle what about you yeah I'll probably have my embarrassing moments for sure for sure mm. like I think my you know musical singing in Disney is is fun mm. uh, and I love doing it but then a kid watching their parent do it <laughs> will probably be like god mum shut up but I feel as though like it is quite cringy and embarrassing but at the same time I can't see how the kid is not going to be the same. But like Evelyn right now, I turn up at the house in full Elsa costume and we just dance around and we're silly and she adores it. I wonder how long that's going to (laughs) last. Open the door and you're in a dress and she just like slams it. I hope I'm not too... Go away, Megan. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, bye. (laughs) I hope I'm not too much of a... I think a lot of my friends think I'm going to be a very pushy mum. So that one of those sideline mums that's like you didn't score that match mm. so uh, there's no food for you to- <laughs> tonight which is obviously rubbish oh, i would never be I like thought that. you were leading on to and i definitely will <laughs> <laughs> i'm uber competitive and i think my dad was very much like that with me as a kid like he was so encouraging of sport but if i didn't win or not necessarily win or like perform to the best that I could do mm. if, if even after that meant coming further down the pecking order you know he he didn't shower me with like com- it was like mm. well okay what can this we do what to improve next time which I actually think is a very good it was a good way to be because it never I never got um I never felt like comfortable I was always like striving for more trying to improve yeah Yeah, I was always trying to improve no I think that's a a good thing I think probably at a certain age when they're really young you just need to encourage them yeah because as soon as you start not negative but picking on certain things they might then get kind of discouraged definitely to not do it oh if if our kid turned around and said I want to be the best mime artist in the world I'd be like go for it like let's do it that's rogue but yeah rogue but fun (laughs) like how can we make this happen like let's go for it so does it my point is it doesn't matter what it is no at all in fact couldn't care less ed sheeran said something recently in an interview yeah he he did you don't now this is his sort of not exact words but he was kind of saying you don't need to go to university and get all of these qualifications to then i think get a, a, a job and he basically said whatever you love Nowadays, you, you can, can actually pretty, you could make a living from it. Yeah. Um, which is quite nice that back in the day, I probably don't think, I mean, who would have thought recording videos I of your life? <laughs> Sorry. Who would have thought recording videos online can make you a living? Not, yeah. a, not for us. Well, but yeah. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> it would be nice but like there are some YouTubers out there who literally just film their day and they are making thousands of pounds a day yeah millions a year yeah it's it's a different world it's a a world that's yeah adapting to lots of different things and yeah people can do so much more with their lives and their jobs and that's a really good thing but no I, we, we, I still we... think learning you know like a a craft is always going to yeah to get you somewhere oh we still need the doctors and the nurses and the lawyers oh, yeah. and and the engineers? I have engineers, everything. Right on to the next one. So before I was pregnant, I I think I was quite a body confident person. I, I still am now. Like, I don't mind. But 
obviously there's just so many changes happening. I think last night I said to you in bed, I had a little bit of a wobble um, about it changing so much and just Mm. feeling like a little bit insecure. And it made me think, God, do I actually want you down the business end? Like watching everything that's going on because I think before when we were trying we would we would laugh and joke about it and I would say to you I want you down Mm. I want you to physically see exactly what it is that I'm going through like this is going to be an incredible occasion where you can actually watch your child like being born like Mm. coming into the world like that is so special and I'm sure in the moment I'm not going to care and you'll be down there with your video camera (laughs) No one wants to see that. But I did have a little bit of a wobble last night and I was like, God, do I really want him to see what's going on? Well, I'm I'm not very good with <laughs> needles, blood, anything. So if you don't want me down there I went for a blood test the other day, Jamie was sat alongside me, just like a routine checkup. And you just looked away. You were like, Oh, oh god, it's the happening. The needle came oh. out and um I looked away and then the the nurse or the midwife then said, you don't need to watch if you don't want to. Yeah, and you were like, oh, And you were like, no, goodness. no, it's fine. And then she looked at me and I was like looking away. <laughs> yeah, I'm not great with needles or... I think I'll be fine. It's just, I always remember, we there's a program in the UK called One Born Every Minute. Oh God. And it is, it's good. Um, but there's, there's one episode where the husband or the boyfriend, the father, just passes out in the corner. <laughs> like when it's all happening... And the nurse has to ring the bell and get people to come in and look after him. Yeah. And you're like, you just don't want to be that person. No, you don't want to. And the fact I get a little bit lightheaded and queasy from a needle. (laughs) It doesn't bode well, does it? Though I think in the moment you must be able to just crack on and sort it out. My favourite episode was when the woman was like nine centimetres dilated. She was clearly in a lot of, you know, pain and... Mm. She was trying her very best and the partner's just on a chair in the corner reading the packet of um, a Kit Kat. Yeah, it was a Kit Kat or a Snickers or something. Oh, I can't can't believe there's only 109 (laughs) calories in this. The woman's like, I don't care. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I think they had as well, like on the back, because he said a few things and I think there was like a competition. He's like, oh, I could win a a (laughs) lifetime supply. Yeah. Yeah, oh. Oh, I could win a lifetime supply. She's like, your kid's about to be born. Put the kid cat down. Mm. That was funny. I'm nearly at the end of my tea. Oh, I finished mine quite a while ago. Should we do a final question? Let's do you have anything question. you want to ask me? Um, yeah, I, th- I think quite a nice question is... Um, As we c- come to the end of our therapy session. What of your attributes my attributes yeah your attributes <clears throat> would you want our child to inherit also which ones would you not want them to inherit oh okay this is that's a great question uh i would want them to inherit my work ethic mm-hmm. um i think i've always been someone who maybe some people would call it impatient <laughs> others might describe it as proactive you want I don't things know. to be done yesterday yeah but and you just get things done it's nice to get things done it's nice to be a hard worker it's nice to sort of have dreams and goals and ambitions and be you know yeah quite ambitious like i want a lot out of life um for us and from the family and it's something my my my, my dad's very much like that and I would also love for them to be confident yeah, and be confident around people and sociable uh, and just to never be afraid of like asking questions and yeah, being inquisitive and um, those sorts of things. My love of reading. Yeah. (laughs) I'd love for them to inherit that. (laughs) I mean, that's, that's my worry. (laughs) Not for you, for for them to pick up on possibly be dyslexic yeah but um, if it happens not be it able happens to read doesn't matter as well as others i do think the confidence thing is quite key just being I able have to confidence like hold wobbles, yourself though. yeah it's i think it's being able to hold yourself in a conversation or a situation where you can almost switch on that confidence mm. and even though you know deep down you might be panicking and feeling a little bit nervous you find it in yourself to be able to 
perform or, or do the job yeah. or do what's what's needed and you're not sort of doubting yourself you can just run with it I think that would be a big thing um things that I don't want them to inherit I'm a born worrier mm. like I worry about things that just haven't even happened yet um probably won't happen you play scenarios out I think in your head yeah of definitely what, of everything that could happen but a lot of the times they're not it doesn't the best I overanalyze scenarios. as well um a big analyzer and I think you're just much more relaxed and calm and you take things at face value and um I think that keeps your stress levels at a normal <laughs> level whereas mine can fluctuate up mm. and down I think I'm pretty good at just like forgetting about something happening like if someone yeah. had said something or had done something what's what's the point of dwelling on it yeah you're very good at moving past yeah. things it takes me a little while longer can't do anything about it move on yeah um physical features i want them to have everything of yours <laughs> i just you've got the cutest little like like rosy the rosy cheeks and the dimples and all of those like really strong eyebrows i think i hope they're gonna have great hair because we've, mm. we've both got like good hair yeah. i had good hair as a kid you've got good head of hair so that that would be quite nice you've also got heartburn so doesn't that mean it's gonna have lots of hair a wife's tale. An old, yeah, an old wife's tale. I mean, I, speaking of heart, so I was actually born with a small hole in my heart, so I hope they don't have that. Mm. What about you? Um, yeah, as I touched on, the reading side. Because mm. we actually found something recently when I, I had like a test years ago for dyslexia. Oh, it broke my heart. And I was I, like... No, not a few years ago. This was 2003. Oh, okay. It was 2003 so you were primary school it was your primary school report but oh, it was yeah. a, it was a it was a psychological assessment report yeah. into your dyslexia and uh, yeah from 2003 I must have got that right yeah my reading age was like way way younger oh it said that your reading capacity I don't right. know how they obviously mark it at that age but it was like 42 percent or something like that it was just it really was low like I was in the, the bottom 10 percent <laughs> no it was quite low um but yeah that because the amount of times I've worried about like having to read in public or mm. you know reading lessons even uh presenting like yeah. I just I don't like the feeling that I get I wouldn't want them to have that um and then just what I would want them to be able to do, and I think that's the fact that my parents, we did so many different things, is that I have this weird ability of picking up like different tasks really easily. Yeah. Um, and if it's like a random thing about like frisbee, frisbee trick shots, <laughs> for some <laughs> that's reason. So random. Yeah. It's just I remember being in Brazil years ago and I just happened to have this knack of being able to. I think it's just the hand-eye coordination. Yeah, you pick got... up a sport. I actually played this week paddle for the first mm. time. Absolutely loved it. Yeah. Really, really cool. You're very naturally talented at a lot of things. You're, you're a jack of all trades. Master of none. <laughs> Master of none. <laughs> well, that's not true, but... Yeah, no, I, I, I think we're both well-rounded and if... <laughs> If Colin inherits the best parts of both of us, we're on to a winner. Yeah. If it inherits the worst parts oh of us, poor kid's got no hope. No. <laughs> well, I think that's actually a really nice place to wrap up our first video podcast. I think it is. I don't know how long it was, but... It 40, is... 45, 45 minutes? Yeah. Down. And it's five minutes past nine in the morning. And uh, perfect timing. Perfect timing to start work. Uh, if you liked it, let us know. It's a little bit different. I'm actually on a stag do this weekend, so we have to get this up quite quickly. That's kind of why we did this, because yeah. you're gone from Thursday, um, and I will edit this today and tomorrow, and then you'll check everything on Wednesday night before you go, and then it's all ready for Sunday. Exactly, yeah. Woohoo! Yeah, I'm going to miss you for four days. I know. What am I going to do? I'm going go-karting. I'm going baby shopping. I'm going surfing. I'm not going to miss you at all. I've got so much planned. <laughs> and I'm going to a total wipeout. <laughs> To be fair, your weekend sounds way more fun than mine. It does sound amazing. Are you going to film some of it? Uh, if I'm allowed to. Yeah, and then we can... I'll film it and just see if I can put it in. Yeah, why not? But things that happen on a stag do stay on a stag do. We're, we're very aware that we need to sing soon, by the way. Yeah, we've promised we've, a few things. We've just we? struggled for time a little bit because songs take a really long time. We have to do them like weeks in advance, so... We would love to be able to do more videos. We keep toying about doing two a week. I think 
a struggle. Yeah. We're both starting, well, I'm working on little personal projects at the moment, which are mm. exciting. You are full, f- just so busy with mine. Marketing meeting this evening. Uh, no, this afternoon. In no. two hours, which we've got to go 11:30. to. Yeah, we've got to go to that. So we've got to get that sorted. So if you liked it, let us know. If you didn't like it, let us know and we won't do it again. <laughs> but it was quite nice. You kind of forget that the cameras are there. I'm so ready for the day now. I, I feel completely relaxed and ready. Monday morning. Monday morning. Blimey, Monday mornings with Megan. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Monday. Yeah, Mondays with Megan. You can just mm. talk about the bit. Ba- you can have the baby there. This is what we're up to. Anyway. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Please if don't you- forget to. Like. I said it last week. You've got to say it this week. Please don't forget, if you liked it, to like the like. That didn't even make sense. If you oh, liked it, please subscribe. We are useless at this. And click the like button because it does help. It helps with the algorithm. Let's try and get it up to a number. <laughs> Let's go for the likes. Let's get it to 500 likes. Yay! That would be fun. Woo! Okay. Amazing. Well, that's it from us this it week. It is. We will see you in the next one. Cue the jingle. Bye. Yeah. That was really nice. God, you were so chatty. I'm really impressed.